that it's Palm Sunday. Have you figured that out? Good, good, good. I, uh, I walked in this morning and I said, how did my bathrobe get up here? <laughs> Apparently I left it up here after a vacation Bible school. That's what happens to preachers' bathrobes. It really is. There you go. As we uh, begin our service this morning, I want to direct your attention to some announcements that we have. I want to uh, remind you, of course, that our offering basket continues to be in the back. Uh, and to also continue to thank you all for your ongoing support for all of the the things because of your faithful giving, we are able to continue to support our missionaries and our local ministries and all of the things in between. Anywhere from from our the, from the food pantry involvement down here just a block away to missionaries in Slovenia and all points in between. It seems like uh, our church is able to to help to to continue to to build God's kingdom and to be in the process of that because of your ongoing giving, and we thank you so much for that. I uh, want to remind you about Trail Life, American Heritage Girls. Uh, both of those groups are continuing to meet here, uh, and I want to challenge you this morning. I'd like to challenge you all. I had, uh, had some conversation with uh, some of the Trail Life, not the Trail Life, with the American Heritage Girls leadership uh, this past week, and uh, they are really, really, for next year, looking for uh, some folks to kind of fill into some positions of leadership, and I said, I have some great folks in our congregation, and I would love to say, I want you and you and you and you involved in that, but I can't do that. And so what I want to do is this. I want to challenge you to pray about how God would use you with American Heritage Girls, with Trail Life, if that's uh, where God's leading you instead. Uh, we have opportunities for so many folks to, uh, to be able to serve in one or perhaps both of these ministry roles, and I would love it if God directed you toward one of those things. So I challenge you to be praying about your involvement and, and how God would want you to be involved with, uh, with those particular ministries of our local church. I want to remind you also that board meets Tuesday night, so if you're on the board of stewards, Tuesday night, 7 p.m., right in there. Uh, this Wednesday night at 7 p.m., discipleship study, uh, the Zoom meeting is again available, and I would, I would also invite you, if you can be a part of that, if you don't want to drive, if you don't want to come up here, you're on your computer anyway. Come on. I know you are. I know you are. I know you're, you're posting updates to Facebook, and you're, you're all doing your little TikTok videos and, and, and uh, that kind of stuff, so you might as well just jump on Zoom and be a part of the discipleship study that's going on on Zoom Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We have many activities going on this next week. It is Holy Week. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Holy Week. And uh, to remember to uh, the importance of this next week that's coming up and to ask God to prepare our spirits and our minds for Resurrection Sunday, these are the themes that are being offered this week in preparation for next Sunday. Remember, this has been the season of preparation that we've been going through, the season of Lent. And so now, this is the week. This is where everything is preparing us for next Sunday. We will have uh, daily devotional videos on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, there will be uh, Thursday, Monday, Thursday service uh, at St. John's United Church of Christ. Just get on this road, see y'all go out, out across, and we'll be in the St. John's parking lot. So you'll be right there at St. John's on Thursday night. Uh, Friday, um, Friday, late Friday morning, 11 a.m., down at First Evangelical Church. Uh, that's down on, uh, on the access road to I-35. That's at 11 o'clock, and lunch will follow. Uh, Sunday morning, at Cornerstone Baptist Church. I'm sorry, they dropped the Baptist Church. This Cornerstone Church. Uh, sunrise service at 7 a.m. That's down here on Highway 77, a few miles down on, on Highway 77 at 7 a.m. And then our church will start at regular time at 1045 uh, next Sunday morning for our resurrection service uh, then. So all of those things are going on. Uh, you'll get reminders throughout the week about those things. I invite you. Be a part of it. It's being offered. Take advantage of it. It will help you. You say, well, I don't need any. 
trust me. It will be good for you, for your mind, for your spirit, in preparation for what's coming next Sunday. Get ready for it. Bethel Methodist Women's Retreat is two weeks away. Hopefully, ladies, you signed up for this. Uh, it is, I think, going to be a fantastic opportunity and time of growth for our and encouragement for our, our ladies. So uh, that is April 22nd through 24th. Uh, remember, mark your calendar for the Bethel Methodist Annual Conference, April 28th through 30th, Hill Country Church. Uh, Thursday evening service starts at 7.30, and Reverend Nate Avila will be preaching. Our local board of stewards, like we do every year, uh, we have the responsibility of approving the delegates for the conference. So if you are a member of our church, if you uh, are signed up back there, we would like for you to be able to attend if you can do so. Uh, sign up on the bulletin board in the, in the foyer back there. And while you're at the bulletin board, check the denominational nominations committee. Uh, see if you have been asked to serve on any of those denominational um, committees or boards or anything like that for this upcoming year. Um, as always, keep in touch through the website at BethelMethodist.com slash Robinson, and feel free to contact either myself or Sam during the week, either at the office, uh, through our, our phones, through email, in any way possible to let us know of different things and events that are going on uh, in your life. Any other announcements? Anything else that I need to, to, to bring you up to date on this morning? Is that good? Or is that we're good? All right. Excellent. Yes, ma'am. great idea that I need to tell you about of what, what can happen there. But if anyone can help Ann uh, with anything re in involving uh, Alvin and getting him to the dentist, anything like that, if, if the plan that I have for, for Ann doesn't work out, we're going to need a couple of, uh, of guys to help with that. So talk to Ann after the service this morning. There you go. Thank you, Ann, for letting us know about that need and how we can help. Thank you so much. Throughout the season of Lent, for the last five weeks, I think, we have uh, started off our service with a responsive reading. And that responsive reading has been a prayer of confession, a prayer remembering and reminding ourselves of the daily need of God's grace that we have, of how it's so easy for all the voices of this world to distract us, how it's so easy for all of the things, all of the, the stuff that we deal with every day to, to get in the way between us hearing and responding to God's voice. And so those, for the last five weeks, those prayers of confession have been that way for us to remember how desperately we need to hear God's voice every day. This morning, we start off not with a prayer of confession, but with a prayer of praise. And so I invite you this morning as we begin our service, let's join together with a responsive reading of Psalm 118, starting in verse 1. If you'll read the, the part that's printed in, uh, in the bold, in the darker colors, that would be great. And I'll do the part that's unbolded, non-bolded, regular print. That's all the point. Look at that. So much for my great plan. <laughs> but it does say people, and you're the people. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let Israel now say, Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. We 
have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will obey you. You are my God, I will help you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Father God, indeed, we give thanks to you, for you are the great God. You are the God Almighty. You are the one who hears. You are the one who answers. You are the one who speaks. You are the one who desires for us, Lord God, to know you, to walk with you, to respond to your voice. This morning, Father, as we begin this service, we thank you for who you are. We bring praise to you, Lord God, because you are God. We recognize, Lord God, that there is no other God who hears, who speaks, who loves deems you alone lord god are the holy god and we give thanks to you thank you father thank you for being here with us thank you for meeting in our midst thank you lord god for all of the ways that you make us shape us use us as your people in jesus name we pray said this, we went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when we drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mountain called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, 
where as you enter you will find a colt stand on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you why you are loosing it, thus you shall say to them, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing him the colt? And they said, the Lord has they brought it to him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they sat Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty work. that need to uh, bring to your attention this morning. Uh, first of all, many have been asking me about a memorial service for choice. Uh, at this time, the family has not decided to do anything, and so we are respecting the family's wishes on that. Uh, I do invite you to continue to pray for the Blackwell family in, uh, as they're going through their time of loss. I uh, also want to let you know that yesterday, uh, B. Northcutt was taken to the hospital. He's had a, a, a flare-up of pneumonia again, and so uh, please be in prayer for Bede as uh, he is going through that. I don't know if he's still there or not, but uh, certainly uh, be in prayer for him as the doctors have had to adjust some medication for that. Uh, also this week, Sherry's brother 
Fred had to be taken to the emergency room and is still in the hospital uh, for uh, some issues that he's been having with, uh, with his illness, with the, the, what he's facing. So continue to pray for, for Sherry as she's going through this time of recuperation and recovery on her shoulder, and also now for Fred as he's in the hospital and the things that he's facing. Uh, Mary Oliver's not with us this morning. She is uh, continuing to have some, some health issues of her own. Uh, but do want to let you know that Mary's sister-in-law uh, did pass away. Uh, she was planning on being gone uh, today anyway for the funeral service up in Missouri, but uh, she was unable to go because of her uh, ongoing uh, health issues and the things that she's facing. So we have, we have always have a number of folks, as you know. We have some folks who are improving, and as some folks improve, we have others who are uh, still facing some very critical continue to pray for these that we've mentioned this morning. Continue to pray for some of the other folks around. I know that we have, in addition to the folks who are sick, who are out because maybe they're sick, they're not feeling well, we do have uh, at, at least a couple of folks this morning, a couple of families who are gone this morning because they're traveling. So uh, please be in prayer for those who are traveling and uh, for God's protection over them as they are on the road. We are glad that God is the one who hears and answers our prayers, that God is the one who knows the issues struggles, the things that we face, the, uh, the pain that we deal with, the pain of grief, the pain of, of uh, sorrow, the pain of, of our own bodies sometimes just not cooperating the way that, that uh, they used to or the way that, they, that we wish that they would. But God is the one who brings us his peace. God is the one who brings his presence to us so that even in the midst of whatever pain we're facing, even in the midst of whatever storms of life we're blowing in, God is the one who is able to be that sure foundation. He is the one who is able to be that solid rock upon which we can build our house. And that house that is built upon the rock of Jesus Christ will not fail, no matter what storms blow against us. Let us pray. Father, this morning you know the needs that we have. You know, Lord God, the issues that we face. You know, Lord God, the baggage of, of pain and grief and confusion and fear that each of us walked in here with. You know, Lord God, the disappointments that we faced this past week. You know, Lord God, the struggles and the temptations that we faced this past week. You are aware of all of these things. We know, Lord God, that in some way, shape, or form, we brought something in with us this morning some attitude, some, some frame of mind. We brought something in with us this morning, Lord God, besides the desire to worship you. And so, Father, now I ask that anything that we brought in here with us, Lord God, that, that doesn't need to be here, that doesn't need to be in our lives, whether it be fear or worry, anger, resentment, grief, guilt. We lay, Father, at your feet. We ask, Father, for your healing. We pray, Father, that you will clean out our ears that we might hear you. We pray, Lord God, that you will give us courage in our minds, in our spirits, in our bodies, that we might walk where you we pray, Lord God, that you will help us, that you will give us vision to see you and to follow you, Lord God, and not to be drawn away into the things of this world, not to place our trust in politicians or, or programs, but instead, Lord God, to place our trust in you. Father, I thank you for those times that we have those times, Lord God, with other believers, those times, Lord God, where we can simply get caught up on each other's lives. I thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to lift up in prayer to you these needs that we've mentioned here this morning. And Father, this just represents a small, a small portion of those things. You know, Lord God, the other things that are on our minds. You know, Lord God, the other requests that we have in our hearts, in our minds right now. So, Father, this morning we lift all of those to you. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Father, we 
recognize that you are the one who is able to meet every need. And so we ask, Lord God. We ask because you say it's the right thing for us to ask. We ask, Lord God, because you desire for us to ask. We ask, Lord God, because we know that we can receive from you that which is right. We ask, Lord God, that you will be with these needs, that you will take them, Lord God, and work in each and every situation. Bring healing, Lord God, where there is a need for healing. Bring bring forgiveness, Father, where there is a need for forgiveness. Bring strength, Lord God, when we feel like we are failing and falling into temptation again. Help us, Lord God, in every way possible. Be your people, humbly submitted to you, obedient to your calling, trusting in your faithfulness, Lord, being made whole by your holy presence. Hear us now as we join our hearts and our voices together, praying as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We heard this morning a passage of celebration from one of the Gospels. I want you now to hear, and we're going to come back to this in a little bit in the sermon, but I want you now to hear another passage of Scripture, another Hosanna passage that talks about praising God and how God's people are doing that even now. This comes from Revelation chapter 7, starting in verse 9. John is writing, and he says, After these things I look, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the, and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? Where did they come from? And I said, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat, for the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every Stand, and let's sing again together this morning.
about to occur to Jerusalem. He is mourning because of what is going to happen as the Romans surround Jerusalem and literally raise that place to the ground. These events are brought on as the consequence of the people's rejection of Jesus as God's agent of redemption. Perhaps instead of singing praises, we should mark this day with mourning humanity's continued refusal to respond to God's voice and God's leading. Maybe as we read, you noticed that there were people in Luke's account who joined me in wanting to hush the crowd, who wanted to make this day not about rejoicing in Hosanna, but instead make this about mourning and repentance. These were the Pharisees, Luke says. And they rebuked Jesus. They wanted him to make his disciples be quiet, make them stop worshiping. They didn't want this celebration to continue through the streets of Jerusalem. They understood also, but for different reasons, that the words, the psalms, the palms weren't the right way to handle this situation. It's a dangerous realization. To recognize that your conclusions concerning Jesus mirror the conclusions of the Pharisees. So we need to look at Jesus' response to the Pharisees' demands and to our questions. Jesus' words to the Pharisees were, I tell you, if these, meaning the crowd, meaning his disciples, all of those who were gathered there, if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Because of Jesus' words, we see that it would be terribly wrong for Ken to come up and to lead us in a funeral song, or terribly wrong for all of us to show up to church covered in ashes and sackcloth and signs of mourning today. If we did, the very rocks in the city of Robinson might begin to cry out when we should be crying out in praise. The first Palm Sunday here in the Gospels, despite the lack of understanding shown by the early followers, and this Palm Sunday, which we are celebrating today despite our limited understanding, are filled with meaning that does not change the truth of the words found in verse 38. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, glory in the highest it's this verse, this, the truth found in this verse that we focus in on this morning. And as we focus on this verse, in, as we focus on the words here in verse 38, there are three things that we need to see. And they all concern Jesus. The first thing we need to see is this, that Jesus is worthy of praise because of who he is. Maybe you heard in what the crowd was saying, the echo of, of the song that the, that the shepherds heard, the song that the angels sang at Jesus' birth. On that night, all of heaven rang with the news of Jesus' identity and of God's work being accomplished through Jesus. Now, these who lack a full understanding of God's actions pick up the song of the angels because they can see that Jesus is worthy to be praised because of who he is is. Even if we lack full understanding of God's work in in atonement and and forgiveness and, and all of those great big theological words that we all tend to struggle with, even if we don't have a full understanding of all that that means through Jesus' death, we can still recognize this morning that Jesus is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. And by coming in the name of the Lord, Jesus has completely redefined what it means to be king. Before this time, king meant one who rules over, one who commands, one who casts down his enemies, one who is able through his own strength of will to be a force to be reckoned with. It became a political office. Jesus, 
We see king in terms of a servant. King in terms of a leader who is willing to be out front. A leader who is willing to set his own will aside and to say, not my will be done, O God, but your will. We see in Jesus then modeling for us what God's desire has always been for the king of Israel. We see everything that Jesus has done. We see all of the prophecies that have been fulfilled. We see all of the barriers that he has broken down. We see all of the healing that God has provided through Jesus for the lives and the hearts in order to bring reconciliation between God and his creation. We see Jesus, the the Messiah, the anointed one of God, the King of kings, the one whose death means life for us. We see that he has come. Because of this fact alone, there need to be loud hosannas. There needs to be jubilant praise. We need to incorporate our singing voices into the millions and billions around the world this morning who are lifting up their voices also proclaiming this good news. The psalmist said it best. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In this moment in time, in this hour, right now, God is offering his salvation through Jesus. May we glorify God. May we bring our praise to him because he is worthy to receive that praise simply because of who he is. The second thing that we see as we look at this passage is that Jesus is worthy of praise because of his actions. God is the one who has blessed everything that Jesus has done. He is, God is the one blessing what Jesus is doing, even in this moment. Jesus is hearing the voice of the Father and responding in faith to what God is telling him and directing him to do. Jesus didn't go into this day uncertain, hesitant, unaware, embarrassed. Instead, there was a carefully planned out act that Jesus fulfilled in this moment. In some ways, it was an act of defiance. It was an act that defied the idea of what religion was supposed to be, of what politics, of what earthly power was supposed to look like, of what what demonic power had control over. It was an act of courage. As Jesus went down from the Mount of Olives into and across and entered into Jerusalem itself. It was an act of courage because there was the very real possibility that the Roman leaders could see that this was something that needed to be squashed. Very really, those soldiers could have come in and wiped out that entire group that was walking. That's one of the reasons that the Pharisees were so adamant about keep it down, keep it down. We don't, want to, we don't want these soldiers to come in and kill us all. Keep it down. It was an act of courage. To simply say, God is here. Not Caesar. God Almighty is here in our midst. It was an act of proclamation. It was an act of proclamation saying, God is the ruler. God alone is the one who is able to set us free from our fears, from our sin, from our past. God is the one who is able to bring healing and hope to our brokenness. Jesus was defiant. He was courageous. And he proclaimed loudly toward the ruling authorities, toward the temple leaders, toward the Roman authorities. No one could confine his ministry. No one could limit his words. No one could control his destiny except for God alone. No matter what the religious leaders did to stop him, Jesus 
continued on with this mission. Jesus is worthy of praise because of his actions. Finally, we see that Jesus is worthy of praise because all of this was done out of his great love, an example of God's love for all of humanity. This is the point that should capture our attention this morning. This is what we can't reason or explain away. Jesus does all these things in preparation for what will happen this week. Jesus was moved by his love for humanity to offer himself as the only sacrifice that that would fulfill God's justice, the only sacrifice for sin. Jesus was aware that this sacrifice would cost him his life. He was aware of the great pain and anguish that he would have to suffer. He knew that those people closest to him, his own disciples, would run away from him. One of them would be the means of betrayal. Another one would deny that he even knew Jesus. I don't know him. Never seen the man before. What are you talking about? Jesus knew that many and many people in this crowd laying down their palm branches and taking off their outer garments and laying them down on the road would completely turn around. And instead of singing praises to him, they would start to cry out that he should be crucified, that he should be die, that he should die and that a killer should be released in his place. But Jesus was in a unique position because he also not only knew the events that were unfolding, but he also knew the other side of this equation. He knew the pain, the anguish that God was suffering by having humanity separated from God by humanity's sin. Jesus knew what he alone must do. So Jesus prepared himself to be, not just to make, but to be the greatest sacrifice the world has ever known. And it all came about because of God's love for humanity. The words of the psalmist, the words of the gospel writer, which we have heard this morning, point us backward in time so that we might remember God's promise That God made a promise to Abraham. That God made a promise to David. That God made a promise to Noah and to Moses and to all of those saints that we find throughout the Old Testament. That God made a promise that God would redeem and forgive and restore. But there's another side to this. Because we, standing on the our side of of Calvary, our side of the cross, recognize that God's promises are fulfilled. God's promises are completed in Jesus. So we are a part of a celebration which is ongoing, a celebration which God allowed John to witness and to write about. And as we wrap up the sermon this morning, I want to bring back to your attention these words that the heavenly choir is singing and that we are singing as a part of that heavenly choir this morning. Again, Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. John says, After these things I looked, behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne, standing before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. That, by the way, salvation belongs to our God, is another way of saying Hosanna. All the angels stood around the throne. All the elders and the four living creatures fell on their faces before the throne, and they worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus' act of love and obedience echoes through the ages to us this morning, we must realize that sometimes we are the ones who profess our faith in moments of enthusiasm and then deny our faith in moments of stress. That we can be silent when we have reason, every reason in the world, to sing praises to God. 
And so in those moments, we must say, God, forgive us. Forgive us for our inability to be witnesses to you. Forgive us for our selfishness to share with the world that which you have shared with us. Forgive us for our inability to love in the way that you love us. Palm Sunday truly is a necessary time. A necessary time to celebrate as we look back to remember what God has accomplished and as we look forward and as we long for the future and the completion of God's act of loving redemption. Rejoice! We are about to hear again this week the story of God's redeeming love, breaking the power of sin, which has separated humanity from God. God alone belongs to praise, the glory, and the honor, both now and forever. Amen and amen. Let us sing. Let's stand together as we sing hymn number 103. Father God, you have heard these songs this morning. You have heard these palms, or these these psalms rather, that we have lifted up to you. 
You have heard our prayers. <laughs> you know our hearts. You know, Lord God, if truly there is that sense of wonder and majesty, that worship of who you are, that understanding of the fact that you deserve to be worshipped simply because you are. You know, Lord God, what's really going on in our minds. And I pray this morning that you will see that praise, that glory, that honor being lifted to you because that, Lord God, is what you richly deserve because of who you are, because of what you are doing, because of your great love. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be reminded this morning again of the necessity of offering praise to you, of the glory, Lord God, that you deserve of the desire that you have for us, Lord God, to know you and to walk with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for meeting with us. Thank you, Lord God, that you are the one going with us as we leave this place, that you are the one keeping these, these, uh, these thoughts, keeping these seeds firmly planted in our lives. You are the one, Lord God, helping our lives to bear fruit for you and for your kingdom. Go with us now, Lord God, that we might share with others that which you have shared with us. In Jesus' name.